There's no hot water. There's hardly anything coming out. Low water pressure? You won't believe what we found. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. This is Liz. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it can be a little challenging to live amazing when you're having a problem with your RV. In our case, we had an issue with our hot water that could happen to anyone, no matter what kind of RV you have, new or old. We go over a lot of the issues that cause low water pressure. Ours is not one of the common ones. This video could help you save money. That's right. You may not have to call an RV tech because we are going to show you what we did to try and find our problem. And this is a little bit of a mystery. So get some popcorn, put your feet up, and we'll take you through step by step what the problem was. In our case, we have a new 35 foot trailer that we've had for just two months. When I took a shower the day before, the hot water was just fine. But that day we actually were boondocking. So the first thing we checked was to take the water from city water and switch it over to dry camping to see if that made any difference. But it didn't. The next thing we did was we checked the outside shower. If you have the outside shower valves open, even if there's not water coming out, it can affect water pressure inside the rig. They were off. Then I connected a hose to it and confirmed that there was low water pressure at the outside shower. That's right. So we didn't have good hot water pressure in our kitchen, the bathroom sink, the shower, and now the outside shower. Now the cold water pressure is fine. It's just the hot water side that is really a problem. The next step that we did was we accessed the water lines coming into the rig. We have a water system called Nautilus. You may have a different system or you may not have any system at all, but you want to try and get back to your lines and also to the back of your hot water heater. So how you find your hot water heater is you look for it on the outside and try and figure out how to get to it on the inside. Now, different rigs make it easy or difficult to get to your hot water heater. If you cannot access yours, don't worry. You may still be able to solve the problem another way. So just keep watching. The tools that I needed were a Phillips head screwdriver. I have a screw gun that makes it that much easier and then a pair of channel locks and a flashlight. I will put links to all the tools that Paul used in the description. So by this point, we knew it was a water supply from the hot water heater. Uh, we didn't know where in the system the, the blockage was, assuming it was a blockage. So I took the lines, there are two lines coming from the hot water heater that go to the back of the Nautilus. I took those off, put them in a bucket, and went out and turned the water on and, and let Liz tell me whether the pressure was high or low at that point. And it was pretty wimpy. I found that we had plenty of supply pressure and confirmed that we had low hot water pressure coming out of the heater, but I still didn't quite know where, where the pressure dropped off. That was, that was still the, the mystery. I noticed that you took the, the, the pump part apart. What were you doing there? Yeah, I was, since I was there, I figured I would check the strainer just to see if, if, if it had any debris in it and, and uh, that might be a clue to where this, where the blockage was coming from. It was clean. All right. Just shows how easy it is to get the strainer off and and, and check it. And how and often should it be checked? Oh, I would say once a year. So even though we knew we had good supply pressure, I wanted to know whether I had a blockage in the in the hose or line that goes from the Nautilus to the water heater. So in order to do that, we had to drain the uh, the heater tank. But here's the thing, no matter what kind of rig you have, you will be able to do this part of it. You will be able to access your hot water heater, whether you've got a truck camper, a class A, fifth wheel, whatever, trailer. Okay, so what tools do you need for this step? You need a half inch ratchet with a short extension, probably a six inch extension would do. I think a three would work on ours, but just to be safe, let's say a six inch extension. Um, and a one and one sixteenth socket. So the first step you're gonna do is turn your water heater off at the outside panel. You're gonna turn your supply water off at your post if you're, if you're hooked up to shore water, or if you have your pump on, you're gonna turn the pump off. And to drain the tank, I pulled the anode out. That's the thing. That's the anode. Hmm. Look how nasty that is after only a few months.
so hot. Mm -hmm. Well, it feels good. I'd like to have a shower with that much water pressure. And it was surprising to see how much corrosion was on that anode. I attribute that to where we had been for the two months when we were in lockdown. I had heard from the local residents there that, that the water it was heavy in minerals. Most people were buying bottled water to drink. So once we had the anode out and I saw all the minerals on it, I figured we might as well flush it while we've got it out. So I turned the water on and let it run until it ran clear. At that point, I was pretty sure that we had plenty of pressure just by the amount of flow we had coming out of the, the hole that the anode screws into. I don't like to leave anything to chance, so we went inside, pulled the line off, and checked the pressure at the inlet of the heater. And what did we find out? We had plenty of pressure. Right. So then the next step was to check the pressure coming out of the heater. We reconnected everything, and of course you have to wait for the hot water heater to fill. We found out that the pressure coming out of the hot water heater was almost equal to what was going into it. So that was fine. Right. So this, this was a mystery. So um, what did we do after that? We reconnected everything and checked the water pressure and lo, lo and behold, lo and behold <laughs> everything was uh, back to normal. Woohoo! All of a sudden we have good pressure. So the answer to our problem is what? We had a chunk of that calcium buildup inside of the tank that had gotten into the outlet port of the water heater and by flushing it, it dislodged and that cured the problem. Maybe if I had to do this all over again, what I would do is I would, I would uh, shut the water heater off, pull the anode out, flush the, the water heater, put it all back together and see if the pressure came back to normal. Um, before I access the back of the, the Nautilus and the back of the heater. Yeah, so if I had been soloing a year ago and I had this problem, then I would call somebody and spend, what, a couple hundred dollars to have them come out? Potentially, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this video could save you some money. Tell us in the comments what you found that caused low water pressure in your rig. We want to hear your stories. And if you like this video, you'll love the next one. So we'll see you in the next video.